Hello, welcome to Rails to Trails Conservancy's webinar marking the introduction of a momentous bill in the U.S. House of Representatives, the Connecting America's Active Transportation System Act. Today I'm joined by Noah Benayan of People for Bikes, and shortly we will also be joined by Representative Chris Pappas from the 1st District of New Hampshire. And Representative Pappas is one of three members of the House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee uh, who are original co-sponsors of this bill. The Connecting America's Active Transportation System Act promises a new era in federal active transportation policy, one in which we treat active transportation as a necessary mode of transportation. Just as we build roads and rails to connect people to the places that they need to go, whether that's their job, uh, an education site, transit, shops, restaurants, parks, we need to weave together our trails, bikeways, and sidewalks into a system that makes it safe and convenient to travel by foot, bike, or wheelchair. Nearly 30 years of federal investment in individual active transportation projects have brought us to the point where communities across the country are clamoring for a way to leverage their existing active transportation facilities to create more functional networks serving everyday destinations. The existing core programs that have brought us this far, especially transportation alternatives, formerly known as transportation enhancements, and the recreational trails program, they remain vital and critical to provide new projects in every state and community across America. Rails to Trails Conservancy has played a lead role in creating, monitoring, growing these programs, and we work to ensure that they are well implemented. However, the time has come to supplement these programs with resources focused on providing connectivity in a reasonable time frame, something the current programs were not really designed to do. We know from the non-motorized pilot program, which was created by Congress and ran from 2006 to 2012, that such connectivity investments work to shift some driving trips to walking and biking. In just four communities, Columbia, Missouri, Marin County, California, Sheboygan County, Wisconsin, and Minneapolis, Minnesota, during that short duration of the pilots, uh, they uh, avoided 85 million miles of car driving. So today's bill will provide that innovative next step of focusing $500 million annually through competitive federal grants to fill the strategic gaps in the nation's active transportation system. The bill addresses two kinds of gaps. The first is networks that serve a community or a region, and the other we're calling spines, such as longer distance trails that run between communities, regions, and states. Together, such facilities address the needs of rural, suburban and urban communities. And this bill also eases the process of uh, de dealing with facilities that cross jurisdictional boundaries, which has been a particularly difficult challenge when you cross state lines. And the federal role in addressing these circumstances is essential. Uh, RTC thanks our co-sponsors of the bill. This is Representatives Lipinski of Illinois, Representative Huffman of California, and Representative Pappas of New Hampshire. And they've provided insight and leadership in moving this policy forward. Now that the bill is introduced today, the next step is to persuade other members of Congress to support it. You can help now by signing your organization on in support of the bill. And a web link is going to now appear in your chat box, and that will take you directly to the sign on form. So next I'll turn to Noah Benayan of People for Bikes to share her perspective. Thanks, Kevin. Um... And yeah, thanks Representative Pappas and to the other sponsors of this bill for, for their leadership and support and guidance in getting it out today. At People for Bikes, we're really excited to support this legislation, um, this Congress and its, its path throughout the reauthorization process. Um, our mission at People for Bikes is to get more people riding bikes more often. And a part of that is uh, making every bike ride better. And the only way to do that is to affirm our core argument that connectivity makes bike rides better. It makes them safer, it makes them more accessible, and it makes going from home to wherever it is you need to go or want to go um, a little bit easier when you're in a connected, protected um, infrastructure network. Um, this bill, we're excited to support it. It not only provides the resources, that these projects require, but it, it offers a focused investment um, that will really 
make a difference and and provide what we've been lacking in this department and and lastly you know we'll reiterate that infrastructure is a safety concern the more we have the better we have the more protected and connected it is the safer these networks are and the safer the ride from home to the grocery store from home to work wherever it is um, or from home to a recreational trail the safer that is um, we appreciate the, the sense of urgency that comes with this bill and and the idea that this will accelerate the construction and maintenance of these networks and so you know, we stand with with rails to trails today and and other endorsers and leaders of this bill um to to spread the word thank you thank you noah and uh next uh we'll turn to representative pappas to uh see if he's got some opening comments representative thank you kevin for having me on the call and i want to thank noah for her work and support as well and to all of those who are joining us here today um thanks for being part of a movement that I think is helping to change the conversation around transportation opportunities uh, and building that intermodal system of transportation that we need in communities across this country. I'm really excited to be able to file this legislation today along with uh, Representatives Huffman and Lipinski, and we're calling this the Connecting America's Active Transportation System Act. Everything has to have an acronym, so for short, that's the CATS Act, but uh, we're really excited about the opportunity to be able to move this legislation forward and wrap it into the bigger conversation about infrastructure. Um, this is obviously a very uh, timely webinar because uh, the committee, the House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee, is really going to begin in earnest its work this week um, on reauthorizing the highway bill. Um, we, you probably know that the FAST Act, which is the last iteration of the highway bill, expires at the end of September. Um, so it's really critical that we act. Um, the cost of doing nothing is extraordinarily great, but I think we can do something um, that builds on and improves the FAST Act and allows us to invest in alternatives um, so this week, House leadership, along with um, the leadership of the Transportation Infrastructure Committee, is going to release their framework for a big infrastructure bill um, that includes new funding that will be dedicated to surface transportation. And as a member of that committee, this particular legislation was one of my top priorities. Um, and it has been in part because of the work I did at the state level, but also the groups that I have connected with in communities across my state. Um, who are doing the work of, um, you know, trying to convert old rail lines into trails, um, trying to find ways to build more walkable, bikeable communities. And what I've discovered is they just can't hold enough bake sales to be able to pull these projects off. Uh, we need uh, a bigger pool of dedicated funds in Washington, D.C. to be able to um, build out these networks and create, um, you know, the, the kind of walkable, bikeable communities that I think folks um, especially uh, people of all generations, including including younger Americans, are, are desiring to live in. Um, we've seen some of the examples of of proposed trails that can really um, build out into significant networks in my part of the country. Um, I think of the New England Trail Network um, that is going to uh, potentially connect urban, suburban, and rural communities uh, like the city I live in, uh, Manchester, with the rest of New England. Um, it's going to be great for our economy going to improve our way of life. Um, and there really is a multiplier effect to the way that we spend these dollars and how that ripples um, across, um, you, you know, our states and our region's economies. Um, Americans are really looking at this type of infrastructure to help improve transportation options. And it's really good for public health, uh, for the environment, and also for the economy. Um, you know, there are programs that have been in place, like the Transportation Alternatives Program and the Recreational Trails Program, which have funded thousands of miles of infrastructure for walking and bicycling. Um, but this legislation really looks to fill in the gaps by focusing on creating uh, more seamless connections through parks and spines that can connect people to the places they want to go in their communities and connecting active infrastructure opportunities uh, between communities and, and certainly across. Line. So um, I'm really excited to be able to get to this point where we have a good bill and um, where we have the opportunity to really make this, um, you know, a centerpiece effort uh, in the House's overall discussion on transportation infrastructure. So I want to thank Rails to Trails for all their work and look forward to continuing to connect with you all and uh, hoping that you can help us 
um, you know, build some momentum among our colleagues in the House on both sides of the aisle to um, help ensure that, uh, you know, this moves across the finish line. Thank you, Congressman. So next we're going to uh, turn to our listeners and uh, accept questions through the, uh, through the site. And uh, as those questions, um, you know, begin to roll in, we did get uh, a couple of questions sent to us uh, before the webinar started. And so uh, let, let me maybe queue up uh, one or two of those as, uh, as your fresh questions uh, begin to roll in. So um, what one uh, uh, listener had uh, written in about asking what the status of the bill is in, uh, in both the House and the Senate. And so the Congressman um, made clear that this will proceed as part of a federal transportation uh, reauthorization debate that is um, due to be completed by uh, by September because that's when the current um, the current authorities uh, expire and uh, and that there's some immediacy to this in that um, we expect some announcements from the US House of Representatives this week about infrastructure and uh, and so there's a process for the committees and the and the house as a whole to go through in the coming months that uh, this bill needs to be part of that debate um, so that we can move it forward. And we are deeply thankful to Representative Pappas for um, registering with the committee that he sits on that, uh, that this is one of his uh, top priorities for the whole reauthorization of the federal transportation law. So uh, that, that kind of dedication is, is really what's gonna, gonna elevate this, this kind of policy innovation for us. So uh, in terms of the Senate, uh, I will note that um, last year, one of the key committees that handles a transportation bill in the US Senate um, did pass a bill, um, but there are several other committees in the Senate that need to act before um, a bill, a, a full bill could come together. And then of course, House would need to do its bill and there would need to be a conference committee between them. And all that would need to happen by September. And if it if it doesn't, then it, it um, falls on Congress to extend the law um, to continue the debate. But that, that's the process. Um, um, Congressman, do you want to add anything to that uh, thumbnail overview of what the process looks like? I, I think you summarized it very well, um, but I'll just add that um, the specific legislation on, um, you know, that, that I outlined on the networks and spines, we're going to file it today. Um, so I just signed off on the copy and we'll be um, submitting that. So we don't quite yet have a bill number. Um, but we'll get that to you um, hopefully later today or tomorrow as soon as we have it. Um, but you're right. This is a very, um, you know, sort of urgent moment um, that we reach out and give voice to this particular issue um, so that we can ensure it's part of that bigger discussion. So um, I think there's been a lot of kind of pent up uh, desire in Washington and across the country to do something big on infrastructure. Um, you know, there have been some false starts over the last year or so. Um, but we feel like this is um, a, a real opportunity here to bring something forward that um, is innovative um, and looks to the future. And so um, we'd miss an opportunity if, if this particular legislation wasn't a part of it. So thanks, thanks for um, you know pulling everyone together for this effort. Yeah. All right. We have a new listener question that um, came in, which uh, is which agency would provide the funding? So. As this is currently uh, envisioned, uh, the U.S. Department of Transportation would run a competitive grant um, uh, process to award these funds. Um, one thing I'll, I'll add is just in terms of the parameters around that, the, the bill includes some criteria, uh, you know, congressionally um, mandated criteria that the agency consider. It also states that this is envisioned to be for pretty extensive um, work that needs to be done um, within and between communities. And so uh, it would start, uh, the, the floor for these projects would start at $15 million um, of total project costs, not necessarily grant size, but, but that the total project to be completed is, is of that size or larger. Um, or uh, planning grants could be given by USDOT starting at, at 100, uh, where, where total planning and design costs of at least $100,000. Do either of the other panelists um, have anything you'd like to add about that issue? 
No, I think that captures it. And um, as I said, I mean, I think this looks to fill in uh, the gaps and really expand our capacity um, to be able to think big with respect to transportation alternatives. So it's $500 million of, of competitive grants annually. Um, and, um, you know, we're excited about uh, the opportunity to, to have this conversation and to get these dollars out. It's, it's long past the time we do it. Great. Thank you, Congressman. So the next question is, what type of projects are to be funded? Does this money include bicycle lanes on existing roads or is it just trails? So let me start with an answer and then let me turn to, um, to Noah to, to underscore um, what some of the opportunities look like from People for Bikes perspective. So um, the bill is written to support active transportation investments um, of whatever sort um, the uh, applying entity thinks is most needed, whatever mix of those uh, facilities that the local um, you know, or other entity applying thinks is most needed. So this absolutely could include multi-use trails, but it also could include cycle tracks, bike lanes, sidewalks, crosswalks, any, anything that's considered active transportation infrastructure. Um, but with that answer, I know that uh, People for Bikes has done a lot of great work in communities on on cycle tracks and uh, i know we i know we and they share a concern for the the particular value of um traffic separated facilities as uh, as helping with some of the safety challenges we all face so noah do you want to say some more about that sure thanks kevin um yeah at people for bikes we're we're really excited about this component of the bill and um, our work uh, for the past, I mean, at least 10 years, we've, we've had the Green Lane Project, which worked to accelerate the construction and building of, you know, the green marked cycle tracks in communities. Um, that's evolved into our big jump project across 10 cities this past year, um, with the key focus being accelerating the connection and building of their uh, bicycle and, and walking path networks, um, all, you know, with the focus of separated infrastructure being the key there. Um, so we we certainly agree on that front and are excited to be able to take the work we do in communities and translate it into the policy advocacy that we're working on here in DC as it relates to the reauthorization bill. Excellent, thank you. So the next question is, will the application process be streamlined and easy for local governments to process? Um, I'll begin that by saying, um, clearly there, anytime you pass a law, a new law, there's an administrative step where you need to work out with the responsible agency uh, how it will be implemented. And, uh, and there's some um, of that that would be in the implementation process that would determine it. But there is, I will note, there is a provision in this bill that says Congress really cares about that project delivery piece and that um, there should be um, sharp attention given to ways that we can streamline the process and make it approachable. Does, do either of the other panelists have anything to add on that issue? I think you said it well, Kevin. Um, obviously, um, you know, the dollars are only good if we can um, get these projects moving forward. And so that um, must require the process to be um, open, transparent um, and accessible um, for for, uh, you know, groups and entities uh, and governments across the country. So we, we look to, you know, get additional feedback um, from you all um, and from communities across the country on this to find ways that we can, um, you know, work toward process improvements in the future. Great, thank you. The next uh, listener question is, are health benefits of active transportation included in the bill? The, uh, the shortest answer to that is uh, yes, uh, absolutely among the findings at the beginning of the bill and certainly um, a valuable consideration in you know, in evaluating um, the projects. Uh, I, I will say it's sometimes, um, you know, challenge. It's certainly a benefit of the bill, and it's, cl it's clearly stated. Uh, it can be a challenge in the implementation in terms of how that is uh, interpreted by an agency that has a different mission than that. But, but it's it's uh, definitely part of what uh, what Congress has expressed in in writing up this bill. 
do uh, Congressman, do you have anything to add on that issue of public health? No, you said it well. It's um, we wanted a clear statement of our intent um, in approving this legislation, and we hope that um, you know helps instruct uh, DOT um, that uh, this is a priority for us in evaluating um, you know the projects that come before them. Okay, great. The next question is: How do smaller towns with shorter trail needs compete with larger projects? So, Congressman, I'll go rather than me trying to hazard an answer. I'll go right to you, Congressman, because you uh, represent a rural state, and in, in you know, and in this process, have uh, been very articulate and seen the needs of a rural state for these kinds of facilities. So, what uh, what are your thoughts on this? Well, I think um, we want to set up the bill so that. Um, we just didn't advantage certain kinds of projects that we were looking at a mix of different um, modes of, uh, you know, transportation in the larger bill, but also, um, you know, different potential, um, you know, active transportation networks across the country. So um, the hope is, you know, we've designed this in a way where, um, you know, projects that benefit smaller communities and connect rural areas of the country compete all alongside, um, you know, those projects that benefit, uh, you know, urban and suburban America. Um, really, this is looking at um, how we can take, take steps forward toward, you know, the goal of realizing a larger uh, national network, an interstate network. Um, in my experience from, from my neck of the woods in New Hampshire, um, is that just the funding capacity is not there uh, to meet the need. Um, you know, we have the opportunity to you know, have a route that connects uh, Boston uh, to Montreal right through my state, um, but we're doing it, uh, you know, a few uh, hundred yards at a time, um, and it's going to take decades at this current pace to, um, you, you know, take us forward to, you know, realizing that goal. So, um, you know, we're hoping that this is uh, a program that benefits both both rural and ur urban America and um, really meets the needs of communities across our country. Great. Thank you. The next question is, what percentage of funding for a project can be covered by the grant and who managers or manages or administers the funds? So on the match, I'll say that the um, very typical in federal transportation law rule of, uh, the, so the rule of thumb is 80%, uh, up to 80% of a project could be f uh, covered by the federal funds and that there'd be a 20% state, state and local match. Uh, there is an exception written into this bill for um, for uh, communities with uh, high populations of low income individuals um, where they could get federal funding of up to 100 uh, percent for these projects. And so that's meant to you know, make sure that the that the bill is uh, is equitable in its in its approach. And then um, and then I would, would also add that in uh, in setting criteria for evaluating projects, um, the USDOT could consider that a, uh, a community that is um, building, you know, providing more of the resources, um, you know, that could be an advantage for them in a, in a competitive grant process. But the only requirement is the 20% the, uh, match unless it's a low-income community, in which case it could be um, entirely federal funds. And in terms of who manages and administers, uh, applicant, there's a list of app, uh, eligible applicants in the bill, including local governments, consortiums of governments, states, in the case of the, especially these longer distance um, facilities and what have you. So, uh, so those uh, governmental entities will typically be um, the, the entities to step forward and, uh, and take responsibility. But, uh, but there's uh, room for a lot of, um, you know, flexibility and creativity for different models of, of how to uh, how to manage the funds. Okay, so uh, I do have another question, uh, and what they're, they're interested in is how this differs from what are known as uh, TIGER and then have since been renamed as BUILD grants. Uh, so, the, so the writers clearly um, are the, uh, cognizant of the fact that, um, that TIGER BUILD is a competitive uh, grant program administered by USDOT. Um, it is also, um, it, it grew up out of the uh, recession, and so it's about 10 years old, um, and it provides, uh, you know, these kinds of competitive grants. And sometimes, uh, trails and other active transportation facilities have been recipients 
of those of those funds. Um, so I, I'd say what the main um, difference here is that um, th this bill would ensure that um, there's a dedication of a certain level of funding to active transportation projects delivered in a similar way to the the way the resources are delivered under Tiger and Build. Um, so that that's my uh, those are my thoughts. Uh, do other panelists have thoughts about that? This is intended to ensure that. Um, you know, the needs of creating um, and supporting active transportation um, infrastructure facilities doesn't get crowded out by, um, you know, other important priorities that are out there um, and that we have this dedicated funding source for this purpose. Okay. So uh, the next question, Congressman, maybe I'll have you start for us. Um, if the question is, what are the criteria for awarding a grant and then how might, uh, what might be the metrics in reviewing the success of a project after it's proceeded? Um, thanks, thanks for the question. And um, I'm leafing through the bill right now and uh, you know, I don't have specific information for you on um, you know, exactly what those criteria will be. Um, but it'll be a process, as we've mentioned, um, you know, that DOT uh, will set up and administer. Um, and, um, you know, we're imagining this to, um, you know, include similar criteria that you'll see for other, um, you know, transportation uh, applications. Um, you know, we'll look at project readiness. Uh, we'll look at um, issues around, um, you know, users of this particular network or project. Um, and so, um, you know, we can provide additional information for, you know, those who are participating here on, on uh, any details I might have missed on that. But, um, you know, that'll be a, a process that, you know, will be set up at a later time and um, we look forward to, you know, having you all be part of that conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I would, um, you know, build on that and say that, uh, you know, if you look at the purposes of this bill, what we we talked about at the beginning about, you know, that that connectivity, connections to the places people need to go and what have you, is is uh, really reflected in uh, the criteria that Congress points to. And then, of course, um, you always get flesh put on the bone of those top line criteria when it gets to the implementing, when it's passed and then gets to the implementing agency. But but among the things that that it calls for is um, that there be an active transportation plan that shows the connections that need to be made, shows the benefits of them. And, that, and th uh, having that requirement is one of the reasons that it is also possible to get a planning and, and or design grant from the program um, so that you can um, ready your project for a construction grant. Um, it also is really you know, looking for evidence of uh, you know, that their thought has been given to how destinations could be served and how this could potentially, you know, further the mode shift objectives of this policy. And then there is also thought given to um, core values of what we're trying to achieve, including um, making sure that um, that this kind of infrastructure is provided in an equitable manner, serving all sorts of communities. All right, next uh, question coming hot off the press. Uh, uh, one is whether there is a maximum project award. Um, there is not one stated in the bill, uh, but there is in, you know, a possibility that informally or formally that the agency could, could set one. Um, the next question is about, um, eligible grantees, um, and uh, in particular, they wanna know if metropolitan planning organizations could be eligible. And uh, the short answer to that would be yes. Uh, Congressman, do you want to um, you know, share any of the inside thinking you and your co-sponsors may have had about um, who ought to be uh, involved in, in receiving these grants? Sure, you know, the conversation we've been having um, looked at, you know, existing um, state and local entities that are involved in um, transportation planning, are involved in, um, you know, projects and project awards. Um, but, um, you know, as has been mentioned, we're really looking at, you know, how do we deal with the problem of getting across state lines and making sure that, uh, 
you know, transportation doesn't stop at the state border. So, um, you know, ensuring that we can facilitate, um, you know, governments, whether they're, um, you know, states or municipalities that are adjacent to one another across state lines to come together, um, you know, that's contemplated in the bill. Okay, great. Uh, so, uh, two last questions. Uh, what, the next one is, is there bipartisan support? And I'll, I'll open and then hand it over to the congressman on this one, in that uh, this has been very thoughtfully constructed to make sure it's serving rural, suburban, and urban constituencies, and that can go a long way towards uh, you know, um, helping there be a bipartisan benefit here and a bipartisan interest and support. Uh, we'll also say that in one-on-one um, -on -one conversations with a number of offices um, in the House, that there, there are a number of Republican offices that have said they they find this an, an attractive policy, uh, and and basically we're working through a series of questions about you know how it might be paid for and things like that before um, before they would be you know willing to to step forward as a, as leaders uh, on it. But Congressman, do you have anything you can add on that? We expect um, the legislation will attract bipartisan support, and we're continuing to have those conversations and um, are in the early stages of recruiting colleagues to sign up to support the legislation. And that's where you can um, help come in and ensure that um, we do create the chances for this to become a part of the infrastructure package. Um, you know, we believe that, uh, you know, communities that will benefit from this are uh, communities all across our country. And really, there should be a national priority to support active transportation networks. So um, the issue around uh, paying for infrastructure is obviously something that um, we're going to contend with with the entire package. Um, you know, that potentially could be the hardest part of the conversation moving forward. Um, but, um, you know, that issue is going to have to be addressed if we're going to get, um, you know, a bill uh, reauthorizing surface transportation through the House. So we've got to get there. And I think members are going to continue to sharpen their pencils on that aspect of it. Um, but that shouldn't stop us from ensuring that we have the right priorities in terms of how dollars will be distributed and where the investments will go. So, um, you know, we feel really good about the opportunity to uh, make sure this is a good bipartisan proposal. Um, and we're, we're going to keep at it. And, uh, you know, any help you can give us in that direction would be uh, very much appreciated. Yes. Thank you, Congressman. And I understand your time may be short at this point. We're going to uh, take one more question and then we'll um, look to do a wind up. And, and uh, as long as you can be with us, we appreciate. And uh, I also understand if you um, need to attend to another matter. Um, so the last question that, that came in is, how do you see this bill helping to build the Great American Rail Trail? This is a cross-country trail that Rails Trails Conservancy announced last year that would go from Washington, D.C. to the Pacific Ocean and Washington State. And uh, there are, this, this is a 3,700-mile uh, trail that's a little bit more than half built, and uh, there are a number of uh, you know, strategic gaps there to address. And, uh, and each of the states along the route has taken a keen interest in making sure they can build their cross state trail to make this whole thing work. And, uh, and in, do in so doing, um, if this bill uh, were to pass with the reauthorization, it would indeed be a source. That this is a, the spine element of this um, bill would certainly be a, a fit for some of those cross state trails and uh, and would be something that uh, that they could apply. And we do see when you try to build a project of that magnitude, it's important, it's crossing state lines, it's clearly interstate commerce, there's a big federal role, but it's a federal state and local partnership. And uh, and that's where, uh, you know, this piece can be very helpful in, uh, in picking up the federal piece of that overall picture. Uh, do, do uh, does anyone else have a comment on that before we uh, do do final comments? Okay, great. So, uh, first, so first, I want to thank uh, and I'll, and Noah, you will um, clearly uh, you have an opportunity to get some closing thoughts here as well. But let me um, thank you, Noah, for coming on on board with us here, and uh, and uh, Congressman, you for joining us today and uh, sharing all those insights. 
And I uh, also want to thank the other uh, bill co-sponsors, Representative Lipinski and Representative Huffman. And uh, we do um, want to remind listeners uh, what we said at the beginning about and what uh, Representative Papp has so well stated about us being at a point where we need to build that broader support in the House of Representatives and your voice to your uh, member would be uh, very helpful in that regard. And that's um, why we've uh, provided a, a link for you to um, sign up your, your organization in support of this bill. Um, and we also have provided some resources um, in a toolkit online. The link to that toolkit will be pr provided in your chat box. And uh, this will help you, um, whether you're trying to get other groups to sign on, you're thanking the co-sponsors, you're activating your grassroots, and there are materials in there like a press release, sample language for garnering support, and graphics for social media. So uh, I encourage you to use those tools, encourage you to sign on in support of the bill. I really thank everybody for their participation, for all these uh, great questions um, that you asked in the course of this webinar. And of course, uh, we're, you know, we're always here at Rails the Trails, uh, glad to talk to our, our wonderful partners all around the country and answer any other uh, further questions you may have. Thanks.